Hey team, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're going to look at hash set. I'm going to show you how to use all the different methods to make this class object work. Hope you enjoy this video. Let us dive into system collections generic dot hash set. Hash set with a type, we're going to be able to store unique values. Let's proceed. In the first function, hash set integers, look at the way we initialize the variables. Notice here I say new hash set, the type is in, and then I say open curly, close curly, and then I have 1 through 10, comma delimited. Now, if I didn't want it to do it this way, I could have came down and said temp, temp is the name of my variable, dot add, add 11, 12, 13, cool. Now, once we get stuff into our hash set, we can also remove it. They have a remove where. Notice this lambda expression says, hey, for that r, where r mod 2, what does that do? Well, that looks for all the even numbers. And when that is uh, divisible, I mean modded by 2, the remainder is 0, that means that value is even. And then we remove it. So all the even numbers get removed from this hash set. I then print out the count, the count, the number of elements that is in temp. Then I show you how to loop over a hash set. Then what we're going to do is we're going to try to use try and get value. Notice here I'm getting five and then I'm getting six. Well, you know I've removed all the even numbers on line 21. Notice that each time I initialize value to be negative one. Let's see what happens in both cases. I'll meet you on line 30. So notice my temp, my temp has seven elements in it. Notice all of the even values are gone. On my output screen, notice that I say total number of elements seven. I have one to 13. I printed the elements of temp. They're only odd. Now let's step in and see what the value of value is. Notice I'm gonna try to get five. And notice value is five, I found it. The output says five equals five success. Now what's going to happen with 6? Well you can remember I did r mod 2. I'm looking for all the even numbers. If that's 0, let's remove them. That's not in there. What happens? The value is set to 0. I did not find it. So notice the output says 0 equals 6. Now you know how to initialize a hash set, add it, you need to know how to remove, how to get a count, how to loop over it, and how to use the method try get value. That's step one. Let us dive into the union with clause. Notice we have two sets, set one, set two, one, two, three, one, two, four. The goal of a union is to create a distinct, or some people call it a unique set of all of the elements. Notice the unique set is one, two, three, four. What's going to happen on line 60 is we see set one dot union with set two. All of the unique values will end up in set one. I'll meet you on line 62. Notice set one, four elements, one, two, three, four, and there is union with. Let us look at except with. Notice the except with clause removes all elements from set one that were in set two. Notice in set one, we have one, two, three, five. Set two, we have two and four. Well, two is the only number that exists up in set one, so we will remove that. The final set will be one, three, five. Let's do this. I'll meet you on line 92. Let's look at set one. It has three elements, and those values are one, three, five. Notice the two was removed and four did not exist. Let's now look at intersect with. Notice that we have two sets. Now remember, there's two different ways that we can initialize the data. We can either go curly brace assignment or use the add method. Notice on intersect, we're saying contain only elements that are in both sets, set one and two. Here you can clearly see we have two, we have five, and that's it. So the value would be 2 and 5. Let's run that. I'll meet you on line 126. We'll now look at the value of set 1. Set 1 only has two elements now. 
and those values are 2 and 5. 2 and 5 is the intersection. Let's now look at is proper subset of. Now it's important to understand when you see the word proper, you have to know this, that set 1 cannot equal set 2. So if this set 1 equals set 2, it can never be proper. They always have to be different. So let's do this. Set 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Set 2, 2 and 5. Is 2, does 2 exist in set 1? Yes. Does 5 exist in set 1? Yes. So that is a subset. Now proper, we have to test it. Does set 1 equal set 2? Uh, no, they are different. This right here should be true. I'll meet you on line 1. 61. And notice the output was true. This is our second example of is proper subset. Notice that we have set 1, 2, and 5, set 2, 2, and 5. I just taught you that if the sets are equal, it can never be proper. Notice here we have sets being equal. Now, the second test is, is 2 in set 1? Yes. Is 5 in set 1? Yes. So now, you have to, have to do two tests. So is it a subset? Yes. Is it proper? No. So this one should be false. It should go to line 197. Let's do this. And that evaluated to false, it failed because the sets are equal. That makes it not proper. And there you have it. In this example, we're going to be looking at is subset of, notice in set 1, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, set 2, 2, 4, 6, 8. Our first question on line 2, 2, 2 is set 2 a subset of set 1. Do each of these values exist in set 1, 2, 4, 6, 8? Yes. So this right here would be true. Now, is it a proper subset? Okay, now what is the rule about being a proper subset? Has to be a subset and the sets cannot be equal. Are the sets equal? Nope. Is it a subset? Yes. So both of these should evaluate to true. I'll check the input when we're the output when we're done. I'll meet you on lines 232. Notice both of the values are true. In this method, we are going to be looking at three functions. Is it a subset? Is it a superset? And is it a proper superset? Now, is it a subset that is saying, hey, look at set 2. Is 2 in set 1? Yes. Is 8 in set 1? Yes. So this one will execute true. Now, what is a superset? A superset is pretty much just saying, in set 1 contains every element that's in set 2. So it's pretty much just the opposite of what a subset is. So is 2 here? Yes. Is 8 in here? Yes. So it is a superset as well. Now on the last one, is set 1 a proper superset? So notice what's proper. Well, the only thing proper means is set 1 not equal set 2. What is that? They're not equal, so that is true. So we already know it's a superset because of line 255. So the bottom one is true. Let's see what the values are. Notice here we got true, true, and true. It is a subset, it is a superset, and it is a proper. I hope you understand all of these because that is our last example. And there we have a team, another C sharp class object. Hash set is a great collection for unique values. Notice that we could do a set theory all the way through there from building union, uh, intersection, exception, subsets, proper, which was kind of amazing. Um, I remember doing that back in school many years ago, but you know, all of this is available. I did the same kind of uh, video for Python on the set and you know like this is everywhere so if you're looking to become a data scientist or something like that this right here is very very important to understand and not understand but how to implement 
So it's great to be able to understand things, but you know, the uh, shoes meet the concrete when you know how to use it. And that's the real goal. And there you have this video. Hey team, I appreciate you supporting my channel and I'll see you back in my next video. Have a great week.